Yes. Hiya. Welcome back to the channel. This is driving in my BMW. As we can see, we have got a light up on the dash. And coupled with that light, I don't know if you can hear this on camera, but it sounds like I've got a budgie under the bonnet as well, which is a squeaking uh, alternator belt. Which indicates to me that something has leaked and spunked up coolant all over the place under the bonnet. So let's have a look. And it seems that my first sort of guess wasn't that far on. So now I've turned the shitter off, you can hear me a bit better. This pipe, this top hose, has got a nice sort of big gash in it. It's not supposed to have that. That is sort of an after aftermarket feature. Um, so, I'm going to have to replace that. Now, this isn't the first time this pipe's actually failed. Um, it's failed before. Now, what I've tested is, is, I've already tested it for this, but the last time it failed, a while ago, a couple of years ago or something, was because the engine mounting, somewhere down there, was shagged. And the engine was pulling against this pipe whenever I sort of give it big licks at acceleration it's twisting the engine round under the engine bay and, and pulling on these pipes um this pipe was actually i haven't changed it since so i don't know if it's from previously being pulled by that or if it's anything to do with now i don't think it is anything to do with but it could be something to do with the Renault 5 thermostat like i said i don't think it is i'm pretty sure it's not so i'm going to put that back in but what else I'm going to do at the same time is I'm going to drain all the coolant off. Oh, that's my intention. I'm going to drain all the coolant off because this has got red coolant in it and it's always had red coolant in it since I've had it. Now, that isn't right. It's meant to have blue coolant in it. So, ideally, I get some of that. So, first of all, I need to get a new pipe. But first, I'll just demonstrate how to check that it's not your engine mount that's causing it. So, I've got my foot on the clutch. I've got it in a gear. And if I give it some revs, I've got my foot hard on the brake. And when the engine mounting were gone, the engine were sort of dancing out the bonnet. So it's not that. Yes. And as you can see, it's not quite OEM or to manufacturer tolerances, but I ain't got any cable ties, so it'll have to do. Luckily, I've not got that far to go. So I'll fill it up and give it a quick bleed. For which we're going to need our BMW specific screwdriver. To undo that, you don't have to come out all the way, just enough. I'm going to take the lid off. And for now, I'm just going to top it up with water. Now, if you use something that tastes nice, your vehicle will thank you for it and be less likely to, to fuck about and throw it all out. Um, so, I'm going to use this strawberry flavored stuff to uh, to fill it up for now. And then I to start it up and give it a quick bleed. But, yes! Yes! Now, let's just see how far we get before that light comes back on. We've got some spare waters as well to make for the journey. So far, so good. Spoil too soon. Well, we made it. Um, light come on around the corner. So let's see what it looks like. Wet. Um, still got a bit of water in there. Anyway, let's wait for some new bits coming now. And as you can see, that has happened. We have got some bits. Now, I did say I was going to leave the thermostat in, but I thought while I'm doing it, I might as well change the main thermostat now i do know there is an egr thermostat on here which is there um that's bypassed doesn't doesn't do anything it's, it's completely blocked off on this so i'm not changing that but i'm going to change this one which is the awkward one to change so before anything else that's what i'm going to do i'm going to change that and then i'm going to fill it with water and a flush and then i'll flush the coolant oh yeah put this pipe on as well do that first but let's get on with that shit let's start with that which is somewhere down there. So before I do anything else, I need to take this off, which is like five bolts there. I'm gonna take this off so it's out of the way, which is no bolts, I'm just brute force and ignorance. And then when I've got all this off, we can see that that doesn't really do anything much. Um, like I said, the thermostat is, can we get a glimpse of it? No. Right, it looks like I need to set this fan off next, which requires a 32 millimetre open-ended spaniel. Now, ideally, I want to get another one on there. Hold on, I can see behind it. Let's get the thing to focus. 
Yes. Right, we can see that there is one in front of the other. So if I can hold the one at the back, I can turn them against each other. But sometimes you don't need to do that. And it is left on thread. Well, I was hoping just to uh, give it a knock and the friction on the belt holding it can sometimes be enough to just let it shock off. But that isn't happening in my situation, so I need to put another spanner on it. It requires just calibrating this spanner to the correct millimetre situation. And now if I turn these against each other, it should come undone. So I'm not gonna be able to do it on camera, so I'll just have to let you know if it happens or not. And that was fucking tight. But with some mechanical advantages later, I do feel like I've managed to uh, loosen it. Now we can just wind it until it until it doesn't come off because it just stops on the threads. Yes. Uh, and I'll keep on going until it does come off. Right, so first I'm going to unplug this, which is for the electricity fan. Which, although I've got a, an intercooler, I've still got because I used an intercooler that let it fit. Um, that's what I made me own, sort of. I didn't, I didn't make me own, I adapted me own. So I can take that off, move this, whatever this is, out of the way. Don't know what that is. And it is a, one of them. So if you know what that is, let me know in the comments. Right, so if I take that Torx bit out, which is a T25. And remove this plastic rivet using the designated plastic rivet removal tool, which is a, what's that say? It's a, an, an SL4. That's what you need specifically to remove that plastic rivet. So you take the middle out and then you take the outer out. And then I'm gonna drop it. No, I didn't, good, right. And then with a bit of luck, it should lift out. Now, we do have this, this intercooler pipe, which is probably gonna be stopping it, but boost hose is in the way. Get the radiator out of the way. Like so. And now we have got half a chance of getting to the thermostat. To which it seems there is more stuff in the way. Now the thermostat is around there. So it's underneath that EGR cooler which is not functioning. So I need to take that off and get it out of the way to get to it. But first I need to take this off, which is the inlet. So I need to take that off, which is two Allen keys, five mil Allen keys, there. Pull it off where it connects to the mass sensor. Now the best thing about this is, actually the best thing about that is that them bolts, well they shouldn't, they can fall out I suppose, but they're not supposed to. So that can be pulled up. It comes off the turbo down there. And then there's another pipe which is connected to that. And then that, take that off, and that can be completely removed from the equation with some origami, like so. And next, I'm going to disconnect this in some way or, or other. Now, it doesn't really matter how you do this, just need disconnecting from that so you've got some movement. Yes. So, as you can see, that went completely as to plan. Um, plastic's just all brittle and shit on that, so I'm going to have to change that as well. Not that I was going to change it because. Like I say, it's this, I'll tell you, this is this is uh, bypassed as such, because in here, I think it, yeah, in there, there is the perfect blocking tool, and it's the handle off of an old screwdriver that I snapped off, and it was the perfect size. Um, like I say, it's not needed on my car. But we're gonna have to change that as well now. And this is the uh, screwdriver handle I was talking about, which you can see it is the perfect size to block this thermostat from letting any water through. So as we can see, the next thing that is preventing us from making the progress is this, this shitter here. So down here, this is held on with, uh, mine's held on with a 10 mil and a torx bit, because I think I lost a torx bit a long time ago, which I don't like doing that, but sometimes it happens. So I'm gonna take that out. Now they're taken out. That's off, six mil Allen key here. Sorry for ears, it was once a six mil Allen key, but mine's rounded off, so I've got some of these extractors to uh, try and remove mine. Now, these do work better if you knock them on, but I'm hoping I can get away with... Fuck me, that's really tight. But with some perseverance, I've managed to undo it to a satisfying sort of extent. Underneath this thermostat, which doesn't work, 
There's another six milli. But it comes out with a six milli this time. And then there's another one under there. And all that we've got left holding it is this, which you can use a screwdriver for. But I decided to use a seven millimeter socket. And now that should, in theory, move enough out of the way to see how a thermostat. Talking of thermostats, the replacement for that one has also come. More about that later. But now, I need to get this one off. So, now as we can see, this is still connected to that pipe there. And that is on these clips. So I'm gonna pull that clip out. That, hold on. This should come off. Yes. Obviously carefully collecting the coolant that's left. And that leads us to this one, which is also connected to that one, which needs to come off. <coughs> it's not gonna move very much because of the a little bolt there, a 10 mil bolt there. Um, by the way, this does have, yeah, there it is. It does have a bleed on it as well for when we bleed it up afterwards to bleed it properly, uh, which I didn't do before, I just used that one. Um, but I need to take that off. And still I can't get to it with a socket. So I'll just have to work it out with this uh, 10 millimeter spanner. And then when that's removed and that clip is pulled down, then that will move enough so that I can get this off. Hopefully. Uh, so now I can undo them, which are E8 inverted torque shitters. So I'll undo all of those. But I turn them in an anti clockwise direction, which um, all seem to have undone nicely apart from this bastard, which feels like it's going to snap. So I'm just going to be really gentle, work it backwards and forwards with this, and see how it goes just fuck right off and that is a way how to completely ruin your day if not your week or your month there is way more water left in it than i thought and way more red left in the water than i thought right fuck here now so now it seems i'm gonna have to take the uh, water pump off to get a drill to it um just make a note of where the belt goes maybe draw it before you uh before you take it off I'm not gonna take it all the way off. But there is that there, which is a tensioner, which when you push on, slackens the belt. And as you can see, right, so, and then I can lift the belt off. So now I can remove the water pump, which is held on by about five T40 bolts all the way around it. Well, I thought there was five, but I've only taken four out and it seems to be loose. Oh yeah, four bolts. And for anyone wondering, but there probably isn't anyone wondering, but that's where they're located on the uh, on the water pump. Right, so now I'm going to try and fix that. But I'm gonna need both hands to do it. I'm not really gonna be able to film much of it, if any of it. So just see how it turns out. So first I need to make sure it's sort of flat. Then use a really sort of bunt and shit center punch to make a dip somewhere near the middle. And then proceed to drill it as straight as possible with a 4.8 millimetre drill bit. So far it's, it, 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 I don't know, it's working. And I'm getting there, I don't know if you can see, but it's nearly central. I mean, the threads are sort of still there as I'm going through. So I've got half a chance with this. Unfortunately, the threads aren't that good. So I've got an alley coil kit and we've got the correct tap tap and die kit, as you can see an old socket. So I'm gonna tap this out. I'm gonna tap that out using WD-40 as lubricant. And um, then I'm gonna put a heli coil in it. So now I've got a thread in it. This is the instant. It's like a little sort of springy piece of shit, which, on, let's, get, let's get that in started. Then just turn it until it's flush with the top. All right, and once, once we've got so it's past there, then we turn it backwards. And that is our new thread insert. So this is nearly ready to put back on, but I don't know if anyone remembers, but I did um, a similar fuck up on the C1. 
Um, when I put it together and put the thermostat in, it leaks because I didn't clean the surface properly. So I'm going to use a proper BMW approved gasket scraper to scrape all this shit off here. I'm going to have to do this side as well. Now I haven't got a new gasket for this side because obviously I'm not fitting a new pump. I have to use a bit of instant gasket, it's all I've got. But I'm going to clean this up and then put it back on. So as you can see, I've wasted a bit of time cleaning that and that. Um, and I'm going to put the thermostat onto here before I put it in the car because it'll be easier. So I need to put that on there. Now that is the one that was rolled out. Let's make sure that that actually gets a good thread, which it should do. It's got an alley coil in it. And these ones will go back in. But obviously I snapped on the fuckers, didn't I? So I need another bolt that's that long, an M6. Now it's a different head, but that one we'll have to do. I've even put a wash on it to make it so it spreads out over the top of the um, thing there. So it's a similar size to that one. So I'm going to put these in and tighten them up. Now that is clamped back onto there, it's time to put this shitter back on to that shitter i do apologize for the length of this video it's sort of drawing on a bit in it to be honest if anyone's actually still watching um i need to put this this is the gasket off it now i haven't got a new one because i haven't got a new water pump so i'm going to use some of this shit i'm going to stick i've cleaned that up i've cleaned that up down there which you can't see but i've cleaned it um, and i'm going to use some of this gasket i'm going to put it on both sides of this and then hopefully it shouldn't leak so I'm going to glue that on this nice and cleanly so it looks all the end, but that's instant gasket on both sides. So I'm going to stick it in place and hopefully it'll stay where it needs to be. Somewhere around there. And so now I've got the gasket stuck in place, I've got the thermostat onto here, and this is going to be probably impossible to film, but if I get that somewhere around there, I need to put that into it, otherwise it might not fit into it afterwards. Right, so, and that also kind of positions it and lines it up for me to put my, um, my bolts in. So the bolts that came out, I need to put back in where they came from. And that is all four of them back in. So I need to tighten them up to a designated torque setting. I need to put the belt back on. Not like that, but something like that. But straight like that. So now I'm going to put this back on. But before I put this back on, actually, what I could do with doing is I need to change that thermostat because if I do it afterwards, the um, this fac hose is in the way and I have to take that off. So while it's off, I'm going to just throw that in there. And obviously, as you can see, I've removed the bolts. What I need to be careful of is... And I don't. I thought I did. I'm sure that used to have a, a green O-ring on it. And I've done them before, but that doesn't seem to have one. And there seems to be one built into there. Or maybe it's not built in. But anyway, waffling shit, let's put the new one on. Which is just a straight swap, so don't think I need to show it. Like I said, this video is going to be long-winded and boring enough anyway. So I need to sort of position this and get that back onto there. Obviously not forgetting to lock it into place. Then all this crap is putting back where it come from. So that joins onto there. That joins onto there. And this joins onto there. And I've put all the bolts back in. So we've got, there's one, there's that one there. There's one there, there's one underneath there. There's that one tightening, that's been tightened. And all there is left is this 10 mil. It needs putting back in here. And obviously tighten the shit to rope. Something like that without slipping off it. And I can put this back on, high quality product make sure it doesn't pop off because that that kit there was quite shit um, i had to do a couple of things i don't know if you noticed before i put it on but the groove wasn't big enough for the clip so i had to cut the groove out with a grinder and um i had to cut that down and weld it i don't know if you can see there but i had to cut it down and weld it because it was too long and it was stressing all this when i got that i can't remember what make it is but pretty shite anyway that's completely relevant to what we're doing today so the next piece of the puzzle is this which I need to connect it to that turbo, I need to connect it to that, and I need to connect it to that. Like that, making sure 
to take care that this wire is clipped into both places because it clips in down there and clips in there. And then once that's done, we can tighten these up as well. So next is this, and this I'm going to need both my hands for. I'm not going to be able to film it because I'm going to have to hold the fan in the middle of it and then drop it all down together because the fan won't fit in with this in place and this won't fit in with the fan in place. So you've got to sort of balance it, do a bit of a dance, magic dance. bit of fucking weird dancing and then it'll go in. Something like this. When the shroud, what you've got is you've got sort of hooks halfway down on both sides and at the bottom that you've got to get in. And I had to take this off actually because it was stopping me from getting it in. So I need to put that back on nice and carefully. Oh, this is the this is the groove I was telling you about before that I had to make it bigger because it was shit quality. But right, so now I can put my pin back in and my screw back in. Like so, and this. Now, if we look at this, these hooks, they bend. So what I need to do is to put that back on. I don't know if you're able to see this, but so I'll put it in at the far end, at the bottom end first. So it hooks on that, and then you can sort of pull it upwards, and then it just just hooks into place nicely. Um, this, I'm not quite sure, just just works in there somehow like that something like that and then that plugs into the that'll do time to put the fan back on so i need to line it up and turn it anti-clockwise once you've got it started just keep on turning the shitter until until it stops and then we get to a spanner and our other spanner and tighten it up i put that shitter back on and what i nearly forgot was is the whole reason why i'm doing this job is because it's pipe popped so I've got the other pipe down there to put on. So I need to um, take this one off, which is just these connectors at each end. It's not really going to be that filmable, but them connectors there, which hook out in the same way as the connectors onto the thermostat. Now the new pipe I've got hasn't actually come with new clips, so I'm going to have to be careful not to lose them. And uh, obviously make sure that it's the same and put your clips on if you bought a used one like me that doesn't have clips and also double check it's got o-rings in it because mine doesn't so i'll have to take the o-rings out of this one to put into that one and putting it on just self-expansion it pushes on and then you put the clip on the same as what we've done on the other ones so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to fill it up and bleed it back up again now normally just fill it with antifreeze bleed it up and then you would be done and i was going to do a coolant flush but i'm not going to do that in this video i'm going to do it in another video so i'm just going to fill it with water for now finest tap water um before i get slated for that the tap water around here the tds is fucking low anyway so it's not even bad stuff it's it's about 40 tds or something uh soft water so i'm gonna fill it up with water and bleed it up the water goes in there what i've also got is i've got a bleed screw which i showed at the start we've got another bleed screw and we've got another bleed screw so i'll loosen all them off and then i'm gonna Fill it up with water, and I'm just going to keep on filling it up until it comes out somewhere. Hopefully one of these bleed screws are not like coming out of where the water pump is or the thermostat is or anything. Uh, I'm going to put in as much as I can, and then it's leaking from that pipe there. Fucking brilliant. No, it's not. It's leaking from that bleed screw. That is what we wanted to see. I expected it to come from this one first, and it appears that I've not actually unscrewed it far enough. And now when I do that, the level drops and it makes a noise of hissing. So let's get that one so the water comes out of there. Yes. And the last one. Now it's easy to bleed these when the car's running, to be honest with you. Circulate them nicely. And that's led up to. So, leave that to vent itself for a little bit. When it's fully bled and you're satisfied about such, which just warm it up and then makes the heater works and everything, we can put this back on. Now when it's bled up a bit and we're running it, we want to put the heater on hot so then the uh, valves are open and it can uh, circulate around and enter the matrix. And unless I have any issues like the heater don't work or it spits all water out everywhere, that's it for this one. Like I said, I'm going to do another one where I flush the coolant out and I do apologise for how long-winded and boring this one's been. Uh, don't forget to check out my other stuff, it's like it's not as boring. And uh, I'll see you next time.